And if it was, did he know about it? And if he didn't, who did? And where the hell was I? Hello everyone and welcome to Action RPG. I'm your host, Aaron. And for today's video, we're headed back to the world of Diablo 4. Now I want to apologize. On my last D4 video, I said this would likely be the last video of the series, and obviously there is one more. And maybe there's more coming, I don't know. I thought they were all done with dropping these breakdown videos, and they have now put out another one. So we have to watch it together. What open world means for Diablo 4? Now this is a hot topic, because there is lots of debates. Is D4 an action RPG? which I don't think it is based upon all the information I have, or is it an MMO? And people are like, oh, it's a mix of the two. No, There's, it's either an MMO or an action RPG. A mix of the two is basically it's just isometric view. So let's see what they have to say. This is an eight minute video. Go. We've done a lot of work on um, on our, our world map, right? Like we really had to define what the how the world map works for the first time with Diablo 4 um, Ooh, you know, because maps. it is a, like an open maps. world with all of these activities you can get to it needs to um, effectively show you all of these cool things you can do without turning into a task list of like well I guess I gotta do this there are 30 flags I guess I gotta do all 30 of these flags here you know so really finding that balance and also making sure that we're communicating uh, important things about the world like well there's a mountain range that runs between these two areas it's really important that the player knows that so they're not like running along the coast like how do I get down here you know and that needs to come through on the map so we've done a lot of um, iteration on uh, on how the map can can show all them I want to be able to scale that mountain range sorry exciting things that you can do um, making sure that the map isn't just turning into a, a checklist and also um, the visual design of the map in terms of like showing being consistent with the overall art design of the world and having that kind of uh, aspect of like an old map that it feels like a, a part of the world's fantasy um, but still is accurate and useful <laughs> the way that <laughs> you would expect maps to be in right. the modern day right. it even has a gps system <laughs> yes <laughs> I guess that's the next level. Huh? <sighs> the next level of the game. We're in a game? Oh. Yes, Grandpa Eddie, we are in a game. You can't be serious. They added humor to these. Ha <laughs> ha. Jumanji 2, first one was way better. And when I mean the first one, I mean like... Robin Williams, sorry. The big thing I think is worth clarifying is around the story is that, you know, one of the concerns about sort of going a big, putting open world in a big neon sign and flashing that sign is that people have that notion of the Breath of the Wild kind of, um, oh, I, I'm, it's completely organic and I can go anywhere and do anything and eventually I can figure it out for my, like that's not really our story, right? Our story allows for non-linearity, but there is a story. We wanted to have a beginning, middle and end. We wanted to start at a certain place, we want it to end at a certain place. And so it's more of a branching story and you can choose kind of what order you want to play the branches. And so there's a pretty quick early decision on once you get past the prologue of, I can actually want to go start act three first and I want to play all the act three story before then I go play act one and then I go and go play act two. And so if I replay the story, I can go and do now act two first versus act three versus act one. So there's, there's, there's sort of branches and come back, branches and come back versus this like just, it's all over the place and you can kind of, and so that's, I think it's worth clarifying that that's kind of, when we talk about sort of your, the freedom of choice around the story, it's really those sorts of things. You can actually not pursue the story for a while and that's the nice thing about the open world is like there's a lot of side quests, there's a lot of things in the world that you can go and do that aren't on the campaign. Why would you want to start in Act 3? I mean, I guess Act 2 is normally the annoying act, so I could understand wanting to skip that sort of golden path and the fact is just that the, the golden path is a branching path that you can decide when uh, you want to do those branches and in what order. The thing that we really clued in on was like this notion, we sort of 
when we were trying to figure out how best to talk about it, it was, it was like every inch is built for combat was kind of a phrase that came to mind, which is like, that was really how it was designed. We didn't design an open world where it was like, oh, we expect a lot of travel here and we need you to do a lot of downtime here, go play poker over here and go fishing over here. Like, there, it was really about, we wanted to have that, basically anywhere in the open world, you could stop, a monster could attack you and you could fight there, right? And so having, when you're, when you're working at a density that uh, that allows for that, that's a different type of open world. That 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 at any moment in any place you could have a fight, uh, and so that kind of changed how we thought about the design and how you move between the zones and how all that stuff plays out. So that's really it's sort of it's kind of calibrated for action in terms of the open world. Yeah, in, f in fact, at one point it was too dense, <laughs> <laughs> um, and so we we dialed it back a little bit. You know, we want it. We didn't want um, to have an experience where you were sort of riding through miles of, of empty terrain to get to cool cool stuff. We wanted to have all of the world have exciting and interesting things to do. So if you go into... Really interesting, totally off topic. Somebody asked me, how will it work if you have, if you're a necro and you have your whole army and then you get on your horse, do you have to resummon them? In that clip right there, drop jump off the horse, all the minions were already appearing. FYI. To, uh, if you decide to do Act 3 first, you know, maybe you're playing uh, through the campaign a second time and this time you want to, to do Act 3 the first, you're going to have different experiences. It's going to be a little bit more challenging um, and you're going to have, you're going to be playing through in a different different area of the world and seeing strongholds, you're seeing all of the, the Elf World um, features there. And as you're going through it, there's lots of stuff to do whether you're mounted or you're you're riding uh, or you're you're navigating through on foot but when we had we actually had so much stuff that getting through it on a mount um, was challenging and so we had to say like okay let's make sure that the roads actually are, are connect to good places and are a good way to travel through this area so that um, you can get through get get to places that you're going expediently um, and uh, and also have the opportunity to go off the path and see interesting things. Yeah, and, and that's one of the things that really, like the Renown system, that ability to sort of like plays into each zone where you can go and there's, you're going exploring, looking for hidden caches, and you're going and completing certain side quests, and you're looking for certain strongholds to sort of sort of say, okay, this zone's done, and I get benefits of that, of okay, I'm gonna get skill points that I can actually, on my, on my alt, I can get, I can automatically start with six skill points, and so I've sort of accelerated my alt progression but I think that's part of the open world we wanted was, again, as we think about choice, whether it be choice of class and choice of how you look and choice of your skills and choice of your paragon, like that ability to, whether you turn left, turn right, turn around, that's all up to you. And so you can kind of go and explore the world and go after those, what's most important. Do I want to go and do dungeons? Am I going to do world events? Am I going to go do local events? Am I taking on a world boss? Am I, you know, and so that, that sort of notion of having f that the, freedom of choice but still having that sort of directionality is really um, I think is really important and that's something I, when uh, working on Gears 5 we added a sort of bowls like large bowls that were pseudo open world in Gears 5 and we met with a bunch of open world designers people who worked on Red Dead people who worked on Tomb Raider and they always said like that's it's a little bit of an illusion is that that people want to have they say they want open world and free choice, but they also want to be told where to go, you know? And so that was one they talked about in Tomb Raiders, that when you, there's like a road and the road would end, but if you went straight, you would go to where they want you to, but the world was open to you. But you, you knew if you went straight, um, that that would be the path. And so that's kind of, in some ways, our story is that guidepost. Like, you know where the campaign wants you to go and where the campaign, you always have a place to come home. Like, you always know, oh, if I go off going crazy for a while and I go and do strongholds and events and open world exploration and da da da, at the end of the day, you go like, okay, I, I've been doing this for a while. What am I, okay, quest, okay, that's where I have to go in the campaign and I can get back on the rail and, and, and know where, and get back on the storyline and go back to doing that. And so, to me, it's a great mixture of that notion of like, playing through a story, but also having the ability to go wherever you want, whenever you want. Interesting. Sign of the world. And Wanted to pull up the map for a second because they talked about like uh, enemy density and not being able to traverse the world because there was too many enemies hitting you. And it made me think about the map is there waypoints on here, right? Because when you talk about standard 
action RPGs, you normally have a movement skill, you normally have movement on your boots, you normally have waypoints that'll take you to that part. That's why mounts are not needed in action RPGs. And when everybody saw mounts in D4, it's like, oh, it's a way for them to make MTX, and it's a move towards an open world MMO. Now you'll see here, and obviously this is not a zoomed in or zoomed out picture. You can see right here at the town hub, there is a waypoint, but there's nothing else in this picture that signifies a waypoint. And then we we're talking about mountains, FYI. Obviously these dark areas are areas you probably can't go into, or maybe there's a door that leads into it, but anything that is light is something that you can traverse. When they talk about there's always a guidepost. Yes, in most MMOs, there are side quests and there's ways that take you through the campaign with different stuff you can do in that open world. There's fishing and all that other crap. But if you heard what he said, it's world events and community events and guild events and you're off the beaten path. Everything he described is MMO. So, I mean, obviously they're not going to come out and say it on their website. The first thing it says is Diablo 4 action RPG, which, by the way, I appreciate the publicity for my channel. But in my mind, this game is an MMO. But I want to know your opinion. Are you happy with this? Is this man? I just can't wait to get my hands on this game. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. To ask at the end of this video, ask number one. I'm hoping today's the day I have earned your subscription. Hoping today's the day you yeah, make the decision to push that little red button. I would really appreciate it. But of course, only if you think I deserve it. Ask number two, check out my Patreon. Thank you to the first 50 members that have signed up. Become an instant ARPG VIP and get Patreon exclusive content at the first link in the description. We have a weekly podcast, weekly blog post, access to the VIP lounge so you can chit chat with me every day. Chance to win custom merch, special title, lots of goodies depending on what tier you sign up at. Again, first link in the description. D4 Open World. Hopefully you were entertained or at least learned something. Aaron, out. Mm -hmm.